Hi, and welcome to this video about Windows containers, internally called server silos. So normally, when we think about some kind of way to isolate processes or isolate applications, we think about virtual machines. Virtual machines were classically used to get that kind of isolation, and that works very well. However, virtual machines could be resource heavy, and so you're limited in the number of virtual machines you can launch at the same time on the same host. If you could somehow get something very similar, a way to containerize application so that they're completely isolated from other applications on the machine, but with using something which is less resource intensive like a virtual machine, then maybe you have something on your hands. And this is exactly what containers were created for, where the most common example is Docker providing this containerized way to, to, container applica to contain applications, really. And so Windows supports this idea at, at some point or started to support this idea natively as part of the operating system. And the way this works is using something called a server silo. Now, in general, when we think about containers, it means we would like to get isolation from the perspective of processes running within the container. The processes within the container should feel they have their own file system and their own registry, and the own object namespace, which means that if you're creating some kind of named kernel object, that name doesn't uh, clash with any uh, other object with the same name that might be, or might exist in different container or on the host. So to achieve that, Windows had to do lots of work internally to actually make that work. This was done in Windows 10 version 1607, the anniversary edition, using this concept called the silo. And the silo is just a job with some extra features because the job already has the ability to manage a bunch of processes as a unit. So a silo always starts its life as a job and then it could be upgraded to a silo to provide these extra features related to file system isolation, registry, and object namespace, which is isolated from other containers and the host. So let's see an example of what that looks like in practice when using Docker. Here is my machine where Docker is installed. You have to install the Docker desktop at the very least. And then once you do that and Docker runs, you'll see that there is an icon here for uh, Docker. If you right click, you can see you can switch to Linux containers and it's important to work with Windows containers for what we're trying to do in this uh, video. And so when you install Docker Desktop, it will ask you which containers you'd like to use. But if you keep the default, which is actually Linux containers, you can switch to Windows containers using this option here. Currently, I am already with Windows containers, so I'm really good to go. To verify that you have everything going on for you, you can use Docker version here just to verify Docker is running correctly and everything is fine. And we can start our experimentation. So first I'm going to use a tool here called FLTMC with the value volumes here, with the parameter volumes. And this shows the volumes that are part of my machine and which ones are mapped by some uh, drive letter. So FLTMC is a built-in Windows tool that is typically used for working with file system mini filters. However, it's also useful to show the volumes that exist on the system. By the way, you have to run with admin privileges to run these tools successfully. So you can see what we have here, and I want to show you that just because when we actually launch a container, we'll see that something there will change. Also, let's take a look at Task Manager at this point. We can see there are three sessions here uh, in uh, this system right now. There's session zero, which always exists. This is where system processes and most services execute. Then we have session one and two part of this system right now. So that's fine. And we'll see that once we launch a container, another session will spring into being, which will contain all the processes that are part of this container, really. So now let's go ahead and run our container here. So I'm going to use Docker run here and use the interactive uh, flags so that we'll be able to talk to the container using command window. So we don't get that container just being shut down prematurely. And then the important point here is to use isolation equals process so that it will work with Windows containers or silos, server silos, rather than using virtual machines behind the scenes or some kind of lightweight, lightweight VM, which is used by default if I don't specify isolation equals process. By the way, on server machines, this is actually the default. And then I'm going to select an image to run. I'm going to use the simplest one called Hello World, which is just the simplest 
an image you can find, it's going to get that from the Docker um, repository. And if Docker Hub, and if it's not there, uh, well, it, if it's there, it will download that if it's not currently in my, on my local machine. And then I'm going to run CMD within that container. So I have a way to interact with everything that's within the container. So let's try that out. Once we do that, we are in the container right now. And to prove that, we can do several experimentations. For example, I can do a dir. You can see there are very few uh, files here. If I go ahead and look at what's in my C drive on this system, notice it's a completely different thing. Definitely not the same thing. We have a more kind of a minimal windows here within this machine. At least this is what that looks like. If I go ahead and run FLTMC volumes once again, we can see there's another volume that uh, sprang into being, and this is the one that is used to map the C drive internally within the container. Also, if I open Task Manager, we'll be able to see there's a third session here uh, that is now hosting all these processes that are part of the container, which I haven't yet proven uh, that are really that are really are part of this container. Also, you'll notice there's a job object ID here, which is a column you can add if you right click and use select columns, which represents the job that they're all part of. And as I mentioned earlier, silos are super jobs. So they start their lives as normal jobs. And the job is already something that can handle a bunch of processes. So we can see it is the same job that these processes are part of. Okay, so what, what else can we do here? So one thing we can do is look inside this drive in some greater detail. So if I do uh, something like this, I can use a tool called DDD that's going to map a drive letter to the volume that we've seen here with FLTMC and we get that uh, to work, which means we can add now a Z drive to the system which we have that is now being mapped to the same thing that is viewed within the container in that limited way. You might be wondering what DDD stands for and that's uh, for define those device, which is the uh, the main function used within this simple tool. So you can see here we, we actually have visibility from the outside into the volume used by the container because we are kind of in the third dimension and seeing something that is running on, well, a 2D kind of thing, which is the container itself. So what else? Let's uh, run a tool here called proc list. So proc list should list the entire set of processes in the system. You can see that currently there are about 223 processes or so. Now, if I grab this tool, uh, this proc list tool, and then copy that to the Z drive, which is actually the C drive within the container, you can see that it is, in fact, right here, and I run proc list without any changes within the container, we can see the list of processes is much, much smaller, indicating just the containerized view that everything within this uh, container sees. So it can see the actual host. It sees a very limited set of processes, exactly the ones we see in Task Manager. What else? We have a separate registry. We should be able to view stuff that is specific to Windows containers. So let me see if we can find something related to that. I'm going to run regedit. And unfortunately, regedit is not powerful enough to show the entire set registry really. It just shows, shows the views which are abstracted away and virtualized in some way uh, to user mode. So even that is not everything. It's a lot, but still not everything. For that, we have to use a separate tool, a different tool that I've written, in fact, called Total Registry. Total Registry is a really, really cool tool, I think. It has lots of advantages over regedit, such as the fact it supports copy-paste, undo, redo, and lots of other interesting features. One of the important things that it also shows us the real registry. And the real registry is not exactly the same as the standard registry that is visible by normal applications using regedit or applications in general. For example, something like registry machine here is just the same thing as HK local machine. That is simple enough, but some things are a bit more complex. Anyway, for Windows containers, there's a key here called WC that shows the registry parts which are used by various processes or to be more precise, this particular container that has a certain ID here. So there's several things here that are being stored because of that extra container. So that's something you won't see in a normal registry. So that's something also that is bound to disappear when we terminate the container, which we won't do just yet. The last thing I want to show you in this respect is what happens when I open the local kernel debugger here. So let me do that. 
with the local kernel debugger, we'll be able to look at silos from the kernel debugger perspective. So let's just launch our local kernel debugger here, and there's a command that we can use, which is called simply silo. With the silo command, we can see a list of all the silos uh, in the system. You can see there are several normal silos, also known as application silos, which are not true containers. So they're not very interesting for our purposes here, but there's one server silo right here. And it has 15 processes, which is roughly the number of processes we've seen when running proc list. In fact, if I click that, we get more details about the particular, the particular silo in this case. We can see the silo server uh, session ID, which was three indeed. In fact, we can see there is a root directory for silos. This is the other thing that I failed to previously show you, is the fact that when you look at the object manager namespace, which also has to be separate for Windows containers, let me launch something like WinOBJ from sysinternals. Let me launch that with admin privileges so we'll be able to see everything. Normally, when we look at object created, named objects created by session one and two and so on, they will be somewhere here within sessions, the session ID, base named objects, and then the actual name. But now the container has to have its own private namespace that doesn't mix with the other object names that are part of the host namespace. And this is exactly where the silos directory here comes into play. And 624, you might recall, is the job object ID that was used to represent processes within this uh, session, which is also this particular Windows container. So you can see it has its own shortcuts and its own non-DLS and lots of other stuff, which is now private to this specific silo, which means that if I create another container, it will have a different ID, which will have its own object namespace, just like this one. So this is also an important part here. And so back to the debugger here, we can see this uh, information here showing us the directory here. In fact, you can see the processes by clicking this link. And in fact, it shows that it uses the job command, which is the standard command to look at jobs. And with the job command, we have the flag with the value of two, something that I didn't show in the jobs uh, video that allows us to see not just the basic info about the job, but also the fact that uh, we have a bunch of processes here and lists these actual processes. In fact, you can see a flag here saying this is not just a simple job, but in fact a silo. So you can see here all the processes which are, which are part of the job or part of the silo, it's the same thing. So a silo is just a, a super job uh, in, from that perspective. Going back to our container here, let's see what happens when I exit the container, when I destroy the container. Once I do that, we can see that session three is gone. We now don't have session three anywhere uh, again. If I go ahead and refresh what we have here, you can see the silos directory is now empty. It's now gone. So everything is cleaned up. And this is one of the uh, important pieces of a container. Once a container shuts down, it should leave no trace related to anything. So that's very important. This is exactly what happens. And you can see if I go back to the volumes, uh, then you can see this volume is detached and still being kept alive perhaps by some, by some tool, but after a few seconds it will go away completely. But for now we, we can see that in fact these things also go away. I can uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and just refresh these things. If I refresh that enough, it will also uh, go away because really we're out of this container entirely. So these are server silos, a very cool feature that Windows has. It doesn't support UI at this point, but I hope it will maybe in the future. Um, but these are Windows containers. You can play around with that by uh, using uh, things like, uh, like the kernel debugger, like the various tools that I just demonstrated. So now you should see the volume should go away because I removed Explorer there and now the volume is completely gone. So there's no reference to that thing uh, at all uh, anymore. So that was uh, important. That was why some things were still lingering beyond the lifetime of the container. But the container can't really tell it is part of the container, even though it can definitely have a hint. If you list the number of processes, you see there are only 18 processes. Uh, you probably know that you can't be in a real Windows machine that has dozens of processes, you always more than 100. So this is probably a container, but that's no, that doesn't mean that you can actually access the, the host. And, and there may be ways that uh, if not uh, properly 
um, prevented by Microsoft that you can't access the host, but it shouldn't really be something that is possible. 